Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. We welcome all our guests and visitors here this morning, and we welcome those who are watching us online. Our introduction for this day, the gospel of the third Sunday of Easter is always one in which the risen Christ shares food with the disciples. Meals that are the Easter template for the meal which we share each Sunday. In today's gospel, Jesus both shares the disciples' food and shows them the meaning of his suffering, death, and resurrection through the scriptures, the two main elements of our Sunday worship. <laughs> Invite all who are able to stand and turn and please face the font. gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment for silence, reflection, and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We are sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by the words we have spoken. Forgive us our sins and save us from the fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, hear our
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we're going to continue with the scriptures. Or no, I got announcements. You got to sit, Jeff. First of all, uh, welcome again for all those who are gathered here. Uh, today there is no Sunday school because we have food downstairs, so please help yourself and we welcome again all those who are gathered here with us. A lot of things continue to go on here at St. Paul today at 3 o'clock, or at the 4 o'clock, the public visitation for Mary Cleve will take place in the Fellowship Hall from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock here today and funeral will be here tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. So our prayers continue to be with the uh, Cleve family and also with the Sherholtz family and the others who have lost loved ones as well in the growths. Uh, schedule is pretty much, uh, everything is printed. We have finance this Thursday, uh, followed by exec council. There's a mini workshop at 1.30 on Thursday. Um, yes? On Wednesday. What is on Wednesday now? The workshop. Oh, it's not on Thursday. It's, it's on Wednesday. Thank you, Lillian. Um, and you'll notice I have communion at the different places. You're welcome to join me if you would like. Uh, next Sunday at 10.15 is generosity. Scholarship meeting at 10.15, 1 o'clock fair board meeting, and 5 o'clock game night. So please be aware of that. Also, scholarships for college. To be considered for any of these scholarships, these applications must be completed and turned into the office by April 15th. That's this year. <laughs> Dropbox, patience, please get them. Applications outside. The reason why I say this year is because it always seems like every year we have someone that, well, I didn't get an application for my child or my son or daughter, and it's like it's always been publicized. So it's deadline, no exceptions, okay? 
With that being said, is there any other announcements? Yes, Sharon. That is, again, the spring, gathering. spring gathering at St. John's in Loena. Yes. And what day? It is April 27th. April 27th. Okay. And starts at 9 in the morning. 9 o'clock at Loena. Okay, any other announcements? With that being said, let us continue with our scripture readings. Our first reading today is from Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One, and you asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in all the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. We continue with our psalm, and we will sing this responsibly by verses. I will sing the odd verses. Everyone else will sing the even verses. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound.
Our second reading today is from 1 John. So what the love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. As he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sins is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do you doubt arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, and he said to them, Have you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the risen Christ. Amen. You may be seated. In this weekend's gospel lesson, we return to Easter evening. Again, we find the disciples isolated in their private room. And Jesus suddenly stands in their midst. 
Like John's telling of that evening last Sunday in which we heard, Luke conveys the same reaction of nervous joy among the disciples. Seeing Jesus in the flesh is just too remarkable for them to believe. Remarkable to even be true. This Jesus is not a ghost. He even ate a piece of fish to prove it. This is Jesus in the flesh, the resurrected flesh. And when he enters the room, Luke records the same greeting as John did that we heard last week. Peace be with you. This is the greeting of the resurrected Christ, a greeting of peace. It's no ordinary peace. This peace is coming from the one who had taken all sin into himself. This is the peace that has defeated death and risen to new life. Peace in Hebrew means shalom. Maybe if you encountered a Jewish brother or sister here in this community, when you say hello, instead greet them with the words shalom. This is the peace that has defeated death. The significance of peace extends to the very roots of our Judeo-Christian heritage. The word shalom conveys more than a sense of calmness. Shalom includes a sense of wholeness. St. Paul described it as a peace of God that passes all understanding. It's not something that originates from our earthly realm, but it comes from above, descends from above. This peace is not from us, but it comes to us the risen Christ breaks from his tomb. He enters through the protected and cloistered room where his disciples gathered. The risen Lord stands in their midst and bids, Peace be with you. This is the fullness of peace that comes through the resurrection from the dead. And it bridges the gaps of our disconnected and smeared human relations that we've had with one another throughout the time and space. It bridges the gaps of our disconnected and smeared human relationships that we've had with one another, not only in the past, but in the present. And Jesus' resurrection peace brings the fullness of God's eternal goodness into our midst. He has interrupted the endless and hopeless joy or the broken cycle of crumbling earthly associations and interjected his new life into us. And as peace binds up the broken hearted and he makes the whole wounded whole. And in short, his peace is a balm and it restores and it heals. And that resurrected peace resonated and settled on his disciples and it changed them. It changed them forever. And we hear it today, the tail end of this story from the book of Acts that we had heard. Peter and John go to the temple in Jerusalem. As they approach, they see some people place a lame man on the steps leading to the temple area, and he's been lame since his birth. And then Peter addresses this group of people. This power to heal doesn't come from us. Peter knows this. He says, this is resurrection power. This healing power that you've seen comes from the Jesus of Nazareth, the man who was put to death. But we have come. We have come to see and know that he is the very author of life. And you can't kill the author of life. That's why he was raised from the dead. We've seen him, Peter says. We're the witnesses of these things, Peter says. 
And this healing that you have seen today, that resurrection power is in the name of Jesus. Not us, but Jesus. So Peter and John had been touched by Jesus' resurrection peace, and it permeated them. And now they live in that peace, and they become the conduits of that healing, life-affirming peace. The gospel says the same thing. Jesus' final words in the gospel is, you are witnesses to these things. The risen Christ came to the disciples in their isolation, in their time of fear, in their time of uncertainty, what was going to happen next. And his presence filled them with the resurrection peace. He gave them and Christ's church a mission. It was a mission that we are to love one another. It is a mission that we are to care for one another. We are to dwell in his risen presence. And we've been filled with his healing and life abounding peace. And as witnesses of these things, he sends us out. Just as he sent his disciples out on that Pentecost day, he sends you and I out of these doors. Beginning from Jerusalem and extending to all nations, we are commissioned into the ministry of the resurrection hope. We are to tell what we have seen. We are to share what we have heard. And we share that peace that only comes from the risen Christ. And as I look at out our world today, it's a commodity in desperate need. The world thirsts for shalom. All too often our news cycles have been filled with now, with war, with Palestine, with Israel, and Iran, Ukraine, Russia. Everything that has been intended, what God's purpose was in our, or is in our world, has been overcome with hate and evil and death. Racial and ethnic division, discrimination, envy, jealousy, old hatreds have driven a wedge into our world, into our society. And we cringe when a new video of senseless violence and killings and abuse is aired. And our communities and our nations are battered by hostility and mistrust. And there are some in our country that put more allegiance to our political leaders than to Jesus Christ and God ourselves. Lines have been drawn over exactly which lives matter and not knowing and not understanding that God loves all people, loves all nations. And like the man born lame, we have been crippled by this evil since our nation's origins. And what we need is peace. We need shalom, the kind of peace that more than just a shallow stillness. We need a peace that goes down deep. We need that kind of peace that heals and restores. It's a peace not as the world gives, but as the peace that comes through resurrection power. And friends, the good news is that we are witnesses to this peace. You have heard the good news. We've seen its ability to raise up new life from the dead. Those who on this day grieve the loss of loved ones. Those who are going through an incurable illness and that there's no hope for tomorrow. Hear this peace right now. And word by word, it slowly transforms us. It transforms each and every one of us inside out filling us with its reviving word of life. 
Dear friends, we've been called to be agents of that resurrection peace in our world. Each one of us can spread that peace, that divine shalom into our troubled neighborhoods, into our troubled workplaces. Whatever the environment in which we dwell, we have the opportunity to share that. Dear friends, may peace be with you on this day. And may oftentimes when you are faced to be cloistered in behind those closed doors, knowing that you have a God who loves you, a Jesus Christ who died for you, the Holy Spirit who empowers you beyond all human understanding. And it has the power to change you and me. And in it, we live new life. And we overcome all things. May the peace of God which passes through all of our understanding keep our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, the risen one. In Jesus' name. I invite all who are able to stand as we profess the Nicene Creed. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess the Holy Trinity, one in essence and yet divided. We believe in one God. <laughs>
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life, God of grace. O oh God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. O oh God, our savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty, especially those names printed in our bulletin and others that we place in our hearts before you. God of grace. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry as St. Paul Lutheran Church in Postville Community. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died and especially we remember our, the families of Mary Cleave, Peggy Hoffman, and Joanne Grove. As we remember and share their love, Comfort those who mourn. God of grace. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend for all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share science of peace with your neighbor. You may be seated. We will now receive the offering. As the ushers come forth with our offerings to present them before the, the altar, I invite the congregation to stand and we will sing all three verses of place on your table, Lord.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a poor love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on this, on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven. set the meal is prepared come for all is ready you may be seated please follow the directions of the ushers
invite all who are able to please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share in the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Before you receive the blessing, we're going to sing Table Grace. Um, first of all, I was hoping that Joyce would have been up here to join us for choir, but she is busy in the kitchen. Uh, she said this is her last year. She's retiring from Spring Fest, from all her organizational responsibilities and skills. Um, but she's said that every year since I've been here. <laughs> been here, what, eight, nine years? So we'll see if we can continue to encourage her to somehow still teach, anyway, the new generation. But I just want to thank Joyce for all her work and her team. They have just gone and beyond. I think half the church is downstairs, so I doubt if they're listening to me. But uh, let us just share our appreciation for all they do. <clears throat> Let's conclude with be present at our table, Lord. Please uh, continue to keep our families uh, that have lost uh, our loved ones here this past few weeks and uh, several of them that are in the hospital as well. Uh, please um, reach out to these folks and know that uh, we care about them and that we're here for them. I invite you to receive the blessing. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day, now, and forevermore. not be greeting anybody at the door this morning, so let us conclude with the doxology. Hallelujah, go in peace, rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen.